Typically, when I make cobblestone or flagstone bases, I will use a basing roller, and I have a whole video on that right up here. But for Cursed City, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Using basing rollers and epoxy is a good way to make these bases quickly, but it's also a pretty messy and expensive way to do it. And none of the rollers that I own really match the texture and look of the Cursed City basing tiles, and I wanted to create bases that match those game tiles. With that said, I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you an easy way to make cobblestone bases that pretty much anyone can do. It's cheap, it looks better than rollers, the only downside is it's rather time consuming. And that method is to manually carve each stone out of styrene. And while that may sound rather extreme, it's not actually as hard as you might think, and learning to work with styrene is just a good thing to know in general. So even if you don't want to make these exact bases, I'm going to be showing you a few ways to work with styrene that I think are just useful to have as a hobbyist. In order to make these bases, you're going to need a sheet of styrene, sometimes called plastic card. I used a sheet that's about one millimeter thick, although I'm not entirely sure that's the exact size because I just used whatever I had lying around. One small sheet of styrene should be pretty much all you need to fill up all your bases for Cursed City, and you can buy it at any sort of model railway shop or a lot of different hobby stores, or you can follow my affiliate link to Amazon down in the description. You're also going to need an X-Acto knife, a cutting mat, some super glue, and optionally some sand or basing paste if you want your streets to be a little bit more dusty. For step one, we're gonna cut a really long piece of styrene with our knife. You don't have to cut it particularly straight and it can be pretty much whatever size that you want. And the way that I like to cut styrene that's a little bit too thick for just your normal knife is I like to cut all the way along and score it and then pick it up and just snap it off. Once we're done that we can cut the individual brick rows. We should cut these to be about the width of the bricks that we want and before we snap off the pieces we're also going to want to cut the brick height. So basically like a grid. And then once we've scored the whole piece, like our grid, we can start snapping off our individual bricks. This is kind of time consuming, but at the end you should have a pile of flagstones that are about the size of the cursed city boards or whatever size that you want to make. As an optional step at this point, you can also cut off the corners of the flagstones to make them look a little bit more organic looking. I did this and it will probably take you about twice as long as not doing it. so up to you if you want to do that optional step. Once we have all of our bricks cut out, we can put some super glue on the base and then arrange the bricks in whatever pattern that we like. I like to use my X-Acto knife to pick up the little bricks and put them on the base so that I don't get any glue on my hands, but you should feel free to use whatever brick laying style you are comfortable with. I also like to leave a little bit of room between each brick to have some room to put in grout or maybe a little bit of moss later on. We'll see what we're going to do. Here I'm using an unoccupied base as an example, but on the actual models, I didn't even remove the model from the base before doing this step because you can save a lot of brick material by not putting bricks underneath where the model is standing, if that makes sense. Once the bricks are fully dry, and I mean like completely fully dry, we can start the fun part and start carving off the bricks on the base to match the roundness of the base. You might notice I left a lot of overhang on these bases and this was completely intentional. It was so that once they're dry we could carve off the excess and make it look like the base is a cross section of an actual cobblestone street. And I find the final result is a lot nicer than if we didn't have that small overhang. Now, as another optional step, again, it depends on how much time you want to spend on these, I like to carve details into the stones to make them look a little bit more organic. And the way that I like to do this is to keep my knife at a roughly 45 degree angle and just carve little chunks off of each stone to make them look like actual rocks. There's no real guidelines on how to do this, but if you look at actual flagstones, just Google reference them, you can get a good idea of how actual rocks look. Because the styrene is white, it's kind of hard to see these results at first, but once you put even a small coat of paint on these, you're gonna immediately see the difference it makes to have these rocky texture on your rocks. We can also carve little notches into some of the rocks to add some variety using a little V cut like you're seeing on the screen right now. 
Once we are satisfied with our rock texture, we can add a little bit of basing paste or some uh, white glue and sand to add some variety to the base. Uh, again, this is completely optional. If, if you want really clean streets, you don't need to add any sort of basing dust at all. I'm opting for a sort of middle ground with these models and just adding a tiny bit for some variety. At this point, we're going to want to let our base fully dry before painting, so we're going to want to wait a few hours. While we're doing that, I'd like to tell you about the sponsor of today's video. One Page Rules is a manufacturer of 3D printed miniatures that I stumbled upon recently, and I think you will find is very valuable to you if you are a player of games that end in the word hammer. One of the criticisms I have of a lot of 3D printing manufacturers is that they are often more catered specifically to RPG players where One Page Rules caters more specifically to us, the army builders. If you subscribe to their Patreon, not only will you get a ton of pre-supported models every month in various poses and variations, so you can build entire units of their figures, but they also offer the option of printing off just the individual parts of the various figures. So if you want just the custom heads or backpacks or whatever for a kit bashing project, you can print off as many of those as you want. Personally, I've been printing out a lot of their Duchies of Vinci figures for an upcoming project, and I am super satisfied with the results so far. But what if you don't own a 3D printer? Well, they have an Etsy store where you can get all of their stuff pre-printed, as well as a My Mini Factory store where you can buy bundles of their stuff or individual SDL files. But out of all these options, personally, I think their Patreon is still the best deal. You get a, just a ton of stuff for a really low price. Not only models, but all kinds of extras like printable bases, paper terrain, tokens. There's just like an absurd amount of stuff. As well as all patrons getting a 50% discount code this month for everything in their My Mini Factory store. I'll be doing more stuff with these models in the near future, so go and check them out. The link is down in the description, and thank you One Page Rules for sponsoring this video. In order to paint these spaces, I like to give all of them a quick zenithal highlight. So just a black prime and then a white spray from above with either some spray cans or an airbrush. I usually like to do this as part of priming the whole figure itself, but again, in this example, we're just using the base to make it easier to see what I'm doing. Once that's had time to dry, I like to apply some dark black wash to the recesses to really help with the contrast and then use a soft dry brush to dry wash on some off-white color to uh, highlight all of the details. Depending on what color you want these bases to be, you could use a warm off-white or a cool off-white, and in this case I'm opting for a cool off-white. We can then glaze on any color we would like to these bases, <laughs> and in this instance I'm trying to match the game boards of Cursed City, so I'm going to use a glaze of one drop Achillean green contrast paint to two drops Vallejo glaze medium. Yes, you heard that right. I am mixing Vallejo glaze medium with contrast paints to create what I call a super glaze. I find that if you add two drops of glaze medium to almost any of the contrast paints, they create really nice glazes that take some of the shininess off of the contrast paints. So we're just gonna apply this paint to the entire base, not really worrying too much about being specific about where it lands. And then at this point, we're going to realize the color is not quite right. Add a single drop of Citadel Contrast Black Templar to our glaze mixture, and then continue to coat the entire base with this glaze. After this, I thought the stones were a bit too dark overall, so I lightened up the tops of the stones with some Vallejo Pale Blue thinned down with one drop of glaze medium, followed by a reapplication in some places of our initial dark blue glaze to add a little bit of variety. At this point, the only thing mixing from the stone colors was a slightly green hue, so I took some Biltan Green and just carefully added a small amount to some of the stones in an attempt to get closer to our ideal color, <laughs> followed up with some final pale blue edge highlights and again using some of that initial dark blue glaze color to blend it all together nicely. And then we can finish up our base with a nice matte black base rim. 
For some other optional steps, I noticed that some of the Cursed City tiles have a little bit of green stuff, like not the epoxy putty, but like it's like moss or something in between some of the stones. So I thought this might be a good opportunity to test out some of the ground scatter I bought recently from Geek Gaming Scenics. This video isn't sponsored by Geek Gaming Scenics, I just like Luke and I wanted to try out his products. So using a bit of scenery glue, I'm just going to add a little bit of moss between a few of the cracks of the base. And while we're waiting for it to dry, I'm also going to use some of these little flowers that I got from Geek Gaming Scenics and apply those to the base as well, just to add a little bit of extra fun to the bases. Here you can see I'm adding a little bit of cavalry brown to the flowers just to help the color match up a little bit better with the blood on the board tiles. And then to blend it all together, I added just a few drops of cavalry brown to the base itself to look like fallen flower petals or maybe some blood splatter. After a bit of thought, I realized the flowers were a bit too overpowering, so I removed them from the base, cut them in half, and then reapplied the tuft to the base using some super glue. But with that done, once we wait for everything to dry, our base is complete. Now we just have to make 60 of them for all of Cursed City. And that will only take us roughly 10 hours if my estimations are correct. Like I said, this is not the most time efficient way to make cobblestone bases, but it is roughly inexpensive and uh, kind of pleasurable to do. And I think the end result is a little bit nicer than using a basing roller. If you did want to save a little bit more time, you could always do like a half and half base and have half the base just be sand or whatever and just have cobblestones on half the base. And that would probably cut your time in half. Ultimately, it's up to you. Do whatever you want. So over the next week and a bit, I'm planning on making cobblestone bases for all of these figures and then giving them all a Zenithal highlight as well as maybe a single color glaze just so that I can use them on the table immediately rather than waiting until I have the time to paint all of them to the quality I would like. In my ideal world, I would like to eventually get around to doing a lore slash painting video for each of these figures or sets of figures. Although who knows how long that might take or if I'll even get around to it. So for now, I'm just going to be applying a black primer to each of them, followed by a blue or red mid-tone, red for the villains and blue for the good guys, followed by a final white ink spray on top of the figure. This will, at the very least, just make the figures playable and make it easy if I want to pick up one of these and start painting them for a video tutorial. And with that said, that's all of my content for Curse City at the moment. If you haven't watched it yet, please go check out last week's video for Cursed City where I painted up some 3D models and uh, made up some lore for it. It's, it's definitely a different format than I usually do and I'd love to get your thoughts on what you think of that weird mix of lore and painting format. And before we go, as always, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to our generous patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to get access to bonus content, see your name up here, or watch all these videos without ads, you can do so at patreon.com slash Dana Howell. Thank you for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video.